Welcome to Archetypes. I'm Lee Woodruff, and I'm here with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is sort of astronomer, extraordinaire, scientist, neurophysicist, astrophysicist. How do you describe what you do? Professionally, I'm an astrophysicist. You are an astrophysicist, and yeah. you have the vest to prove it. Thank you. It, it Thank underlines you. what it is that you do, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about. Because you, know, you know something? What? Underline is simply the typesetter's instruction for italics. I didn't know that. Yes, that's all. That's why you never see anything underlined in a newspaper. It's just italic. It's a weird leftover curiosity of the transition from typewriter to computer when all you had was a typewriter communicating with typesetters. But see, this is what makes you so fascinating. You kind of know about everything. You are... No, no. You are... Okay, wait. I only right. talk about what I know, and that might sound like everything, but there's a whole lot of stuff I don't know. No, but you know a whole lot of cool stuff. You know Did why you know I know that? a lot of cool stuff? Why? Because when I'm with someone, mm -hmm. and they ask me about the universe, I say I'm not interested in the universe, because I already know about it. I want to find out what you do. Okay. And then I learn about what people do. I don't grow up and only ever talk about the universe. Well, so let's talk about that. You have a, a huge appetite for being intellectually curious. Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? Uh, well, it, it's, it is contained within any adult who has not grown up. So you're still a big child. I'm still a kid. And I think that's true for most, if not every single person who carries scientist as a title. Because what does a kid do? A kid turns over rocks and explores and pokes things. And it takes foresight for an adult to allow that, recognizing that these explorations that usually end up in stuff that's broken are actually experiments on the forces of nature that surround us. Kids don't worry about the weather. Oh, it's raining, let's go out and get wet. No, you'll get your clothes dirty. Oh, there's a mud puddle there, let me jump into it with two feet. No, everything is a no. Every time it's snowing outside, now I have to remind myself, but I do open my mouth and catch snowflakes in it just like kids. I, it's a reminder of what I don't want to lose as I get older because that is an inherent state of curiosity that I think we're born with and just get it beaten out of us because it's not mature to jump two feet into puddles. So how did you not get this beaten out of you? What did your parents do right? Uh, so, well, my parents are not scientists. My mother was a housewife, a common profession of the day. My father was a practicing sort of sociologist. Meanwhile, here's their son, the astrophysicist, which I knew I wanted to be since age 11. Many parents want their kids to be what they are or want their kids to be what they tried to be and never mm -hmm. were. None of that went on in my household. They saw what I was interested in, that of my siblings, and they nurtured that. You said you knew what you wanted to do since you were 11. Do well, you were actually, since age 9. Since I was 11, I was able to assign a job title to it. So what was it at nine? That Do you remember the sort of a focal oh, yeah. moment? At age nine, first encounter with a planetarium sky at my local planetarium, the Hayden Planetarium mm -hmm. here in New York City. So Where you are now director, I'd like to point out. Yeah, yes. Which I'm is now pretty darn cool. Director. You know, you go in and you, the big com comfortable chairs and they recline or they lean far back and then they turn out the lights and the stars come out and I thought it was a hoax. Oh yeah, it was a hoax. Because I, I knew the night sky from the Bronx, where I grew up. The sky had nine stars in it, you know? <laughs> and this had thousands, countless thousands. Yeah, of course, later I would know that it was the real sky, and from then on, the universe called me. And I, in retrospect, I think perhaps had no say in the matter. It was just what you were meant to do. Yeah, and so I've been thinking about the universe ever since. And who are your heroes? In your field? Yeah, uh, I'm not very hero driven or role model driven. In fact, I think role model is overrated. In fact, I think it's a bad concept. Typically, a role model is someone who resembles your profile in some fundamental way and you want to follow their steps to become what they are. Okay, so there I am at age 11 in 1969 and I'm going to find a black astrophysicist who grew up in the Bronx. No, there aren't any. So am I going to limit my options in life because maybe I'm going to do something where I'm the first? No. The problem with role models today is you have these athletic role models and then they, they have steroids or drugs or whatever. And then the people who put them up as role models then worry that the kids who saw them as role models now want to do drugs. That's just, it's, no. 
No, if you like their athletics, like their athletics. Carve that out and put it there and reach for that. Don't be the rest of what they are. Who knows what the rest of what they are is? So you are author, astrophysicist, yes. educator, yes. still an athlete, it looks like. Uh, well. <laughs> and parent, and morally responsible parent. parent. I'd, I'd like to think so, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, it's every, maintaining all that is always a challenge, mm -hmm. right? We're all human. But that doesn't mean the goals can't stand there in front of you and where you want to reach for it every day. How have you conducted yourself as a parent then, as the father of two children, and trying to take what you stitched together and then what your parents obviously gave you in such a wonderful way? Oh, so I take some of those lessons that I value and, you know what's interesting? Hmm. Well, what I think is interesting. Their parents, I'm describing a stereotyped case, possibly even a caricature, but we've all heard it and we'll all understand it when I say it. You get someone who's perhaps born in poverty or born under very hard times and they struggle and they do anything they can to make just a buck and then they finally succeed and they're actually wealthy and they want to have a family and they have kids and they say to themselves, I don't want my kids to struggle the way I did. That person forgets to recognize or does not realize that they became who they are because of those challenges. Not in spite of them, but because of them. And if you become what you are because of them and you want a next generation to achieve the same, then you got to put challenges out there. I'm not saying starve your kids the way you had to, but there are other ways you can put the challenges in front of them. How does your mind work? Oh, what I found, I remember walking to a library one day and doing the math. Oh, it was a big library that I did this in. And I said, well, at what rate am I reading books? That's a number, we write it down. How many books are there, okay? If you divide the total number of books by the rate at which you read the books, out the other side comes a time. And that's the total time it will take you to read every single book. And for the library I happened to be standing in front of, it was multiple lifetimes. And that was a depressing moment. It meant I wouldn't know everything that was ever written. So I said, well, there are these little things I can read. I can read about this and that. And when you start this, you wonder, will it ever sum to anything? But as I kept learning, I reached a point where all of a sudden, pathways began to connect them. Well, this only happened because this series of events happened before it. And that happened because this happened at the same time. All of this fragmented knowledge became understanding and wisdom. And I like to think it's still growing. Only if you keep learning does this, can this ever possibly happen to you. If you just said, I, don't, I only need to know this because that's for my job and I don't need to know anything else and I won't, then you have sort of linear knowledge. My most cherished emails that I get are from people who got into a fight at the bar over how black holes will kill you or <laughs> of the fate of our galaxy or what will be the, the thermodynamic death of the future of the universe. I love that. 